Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor with another short screencast about access. And this time we're going to get into queries. After we've done the hard work of creating our relationships to model our business and our tables together and imported our data into our, our database, we're ready to start having fun by pulling out information that we want for analysis in queries. Here's the relationship screen for the Northwind database. And this time we're going to ask questions about which customers have purchased which products. Notice that to get from the customer's table, though, to the product's table, we got to go through the orders. One customer can have many orders, and then one order can be on many order details, which I probably would have called that the line items table. But Northwind called it the order details table, because after all, one product can be on many orders, and one order can have many products. Our question now is what customers are buying which products? I'm going to close my relationship screen go into my query, I almost always use query design view instead of the query wizard because to ask questions about your data is now when you're starting to really get the benefit of a relational database, which is to have accurate, reliable data that everyone can share that's always updated so you're productive and you're sure that you're all looking at the same set of data. So let's add the products table and let's add the customers table. And as soon as I do that, I notice that there's no direct relationship between these tables. If I pull down the product name and the company name to see which products are purchased by which companies, I'm going to choose an ascending sort on both of these fields so that I get product names first and then the company names within the product name. And I look at this. Anytime you get a wildly great number of records that you know is unreasonable, 7,007, you know that something's wrong. I've got my product names here, my company names, and how did I get 7,007 records? Well, the way I got that is by multiplying the number of customers, which is 91, by the number of products, which is 77. So when you do not have direct relationships between your tables, you're going to get what's called a Cartesian join. Every record in the products table is attempting to connect to every record in the customer's table, 77 times 91 is 7,007. You almost never need a query to do a Cartesian join. There are some really rare cases where that's appropriate, but by and large, the vast majority of your queries are going to need to understand the relationships that define your relational database. So if I really wanted to find the product name field and the company name field in a query, I would want to include the orders and the order details tables. These tables would know how they appropriately join. And when I hit my data sheet view button, now I've only got 2,155 records. And the reason I have that many records is because that's how many line items records I have. So if we took the line items from every order and added them together, that's what's in the order details table, and that's 2,155 records, and that's exactly how many I'm getting in this particular query. So that's one thing based on your knowledge of your data that you're constantly going to want to do. As soon as you hit that data sheet view button, you're going to want to look at the number of records and say, does that make sense? Does that pass the reasonableness test for me based on what I know about my data? Now, again, the query is the coolest tool in the relational database because it selects data out that you want to examine. And remember, with the relational database, we're working on one set of data. So that product name, Alice Mutton, is only stored one time in one record in the products table. But here it's been selected out. Let's see how many times it's been selected out. If you click on that last record, it's been selected out 37 times because it's on 37 different line items in the order details table. If I change that product name and I can change it anywhere on any of these entries because they're all one entry that's been selected out 37 different times and moved to a different record, I immediately see that data written down to the products table and then reselected out in this query and automatically changed for every line item that's ordered that product. And that is the magic of a relational database and using access is that when you edit the data, every single query, every single form that shows the data, and every single report that displays the data 
is automatically changed. And why? Because a query is not really the data. A query is a series of SQL statements that merely select the data out of the tables. And we most commonly are writing select queries because we're just selecting out these fields from these tables. And then this clause tells us how those tables are joined together. And then this clause, order by, tells us how we're sorting the records. And if you want to know more about SQL, go back to my textbooks, which the Concepts of Database Management textbook really helps you set up the relational database in the first place. It goes through that process of normalizing your data. And then the illustrated Microsoft Access 2019 textbook really focuses on the features of Access itself. The key thing to realize is that a query is selecting data out of these tables. The tables are the only single place where the data is stored, and that will make sure that everyone's using a single, accurate, up-to-date copy of the data, which is why a relational database is oh so powerful. There are many different other types of queries that we'll go through in different screencasts, but by far the most common is the select query because it just selects data to display on a data sheet. And then that data sheet, that query, can be used as the source of the information for forms, which are used for data entry and reports which are used for making the data pretty and distributing it electronically. And because you will be creating so many queries, you'll get good at building queries on your own. I don't need to add a lot of screencasts on this. This is something that once you have your access database designed and ready to go, you're going to be solid on just because you're going to be working on this so often. But I do want to show you a couple other things that are key about queries just to ramp up your productivity as quickly as possible. And that is these criteria rows. On the criteria rows, you can limit the number of records that you're looking at. For example, let's change this Alice Mutton back to Alice Mutton. And I've got 1,155 records because I've got all these other things. And let's do Boston crab meat for fun. I'm going to put the Boston crab meat criteria into the product name, and let's see how many records we get. We get 41 records. If I then want to find all the Boston crab meats for a particular company, I can put the company name in here, quick stop, and find only the orders of Boston crab meat for that particular company. And notice that that criteria is on the very same row. That means that both of the criteria must be true. Product name must be Boston Crab Meat, and company name must be Quick Stop. But watch what happens if I move the criteria for one of these to a new row. This would mean that the product name has to be Boston Crab Meat, it can be any company name, and this row means it can be any product name, but it has to be the company name of Quick Stop. This is going to give me many more records because I've got all of my Boston Crab Meats here, and I also have all the Quick Stops. So Quick Stop ordered aniseed syrup, and if I go down here, Quick Stop has ordered a bunch of other things as well, in addition to Boston crab meat. So the key with the criteria rows is to realize that each of those rows is a separate question about the data that gets added into the record set that displays when you click the view button. I like to think of these criteria rows as races and these criteria as hurdles, and every record gets to run every race see if it can make it to the finish line. So if I can jump over this Boston crab meat hurdle, then I'm good to go. If I jump over the quick stop company name, I'm good to go, regardless of product name. Now you notice that both of these fields must be text fields because after I put in the criteria, I can either type the quotation marks or I can just click away and the quotation marks are added automatically for me. On a lot of criteria such as quantity, that's a number. So if I go to this, this is a number. So if I just want like the big orders that are greater than 50, then I could put in a criteria of greater than 50. Notice that that greater than 50 is only on the Boston crab meat. So that criteria hurdle does not flow through to different rows or races. If I look at my sheet here, I'm going to get uh, Boston crab meat large orders, all greater than 50. Look on here with quick stop. I've got a little order here of 11. And that's because this quick stop row did not have this additional hurdle. So if I just want the big orders for Boston crab meat and the big orders for quick stop, I actually have to put that criteria in both rows so that that hurdle is in both races. 
In future screencasts, we're going to talk about forms and reports. And I highly recommend that before you create a form or before you create a report, you create a query first to select the data you want to display on that form or report and then build the form or report on that query. And I'll explain why that's a good approach, not a required approach, but a good approach in future screencasts. But I feel that with just a thimble full of information about queries, you can really pull a lot of valuable information out of your relational database. In the next screencast, I'm going to talk about calculated fields using queries. Thank you.